kids, your house. Got a new roof on it. We've added some things like the dual fuel furnace. Had it had the house all tightened up so we could get it um, efficient. Let's put it. We didn't want to spend a lot of money every month on bills, so it's uh, very efficient that way. Um, put in the wood floors in the house. Upgraded the appliances. So we've done some of those things that were, you know, you might do on a, if you live somewhere long enough, you might build it. But on the outside, it's all brick and it's really very maintenance free. My father-in-law had bought this place as a piece of dirt and moved in with his RV, punched the well, got electric put in, built one shop, backed his RV in the shop, said now I'm out of the weather, then decided he wanted a little kitchen uh, out in the shop so he didn't have to cook in the RV. So that started the shop apartment. Then he said, well, it'd be nice to have a bedroom out there too. And started that and then they finished that out. Then he built the other building, then they eventually built the house. So when we moved out here, my father-in-law said, well, you can just live in the apartment until you find a place. I said, okay. So we moved up all of our stuff and loaded that shop with all of our furniture. And Kenda and I and our two high school age boys moved into the shop, into the shop apartment. And um, so I worked, I was a outside sales guy, so I was partly working from home. Kenda's homeschooling the boys, so it was snug. And we lived there for, or I was there for about nine months. They came up a couple months afterwards. And we looked for places. We were trying to find a little piece of ground, we could raise cattle and kind of live our dream of, of uh, uh, having a little livestock operation. And we just could not find anything that we liked. We looked all over Jasper County and up north and over towards uh, Lawrence County. And then my father-in-law finally said, well, you know what? Why don't you buy it from us since you can't find something you like? And we said, oh, okay, so that works. So we'd already had a, been living here for a while and got a good test drive in the place. That's how we got here. When we bought it, it was all in row crop. And uh, we're not farmers, but we wanted to raise cows and sheep and, and eventually uh, did quite a bit of stuff on grass. And so we went ahead and put it back in the grass uh, put in a uh, full grazing system. Uh, we were kind of uh, in this area, area, I guess, an early adopter when the NRCS was doing the grazing schools and everything in the county. And so we learned about that and been reading about it for a while. So we put in the grazing system, put water tanks throughout the place that they were piped off the well to get animals out of the pond. Um, and then just started working on the soils and the grass to get it back to a really nice grazing operation. Generally, you see the kids that grew up in the country just, they just tend to have a little more common sense, a little, you know, they got a good work ethic because you got to work and you got to get stuff done and, and you just don't, you know, there's just things to do. And so um, for me, watching the kids get to experience that, you know, they got to, they got to learn how to ride their horses. They got to learn how to break their horses. They got broken by their horses. You know, they throw their four wheelers all over the place. They work build the fence all day long and then when I got home from work we build fence for another three hours till dark and uh, so just kind of watching them uh, get to experience all of this and grow up with it that was that was probably the, the best thing for me. And watching the kids probably well we milked for a while we have a light micro dairy on the farm and teaching them how to milk and teaching them how to process chickens was pretty funny. Yeah, yeah one time we did everything grass-fed raw milk and broilers on pasture and eggs and, and we did all that we had I'd say a little farm store here and a lot of people came out. So the boys got to learn a lot and they got and they got really good at it. Um, so I'm sure there's uh, like all kids they probably don't have the fondest memories of milking if they're there anymore. But it was, it was fun to watch them go through that. Well um, I like to go to the river. That's my favorite part of the place and my favorite my favorite thing really is to sit on the back porch and drink coffee and watch the mist come up in the morning and the dew come up. It's beautiful. And since we have the pond and the river, that's pretty frequent. Her dad and her grandparents 
had a farm in the next city right between the North Fork and the Spring River. So when her dad moved back to this area, his, his dream was to have another farm on one of those two rivers. And so North Fork is what he was able to find. So Kenda's family has been here uh, several generations back uh, in this area. Probably the hardest thing about uh, leaving because it's just tough to find a spot like this where you can you can sit out back and say, wow, we, you know, it takes work like any piece of land does, but to us it always has been a little piece of paradise. So this particular area has a lot of deer and turkeys. It's very common right off the back porch to see deer right in the bottoms uh, grazing. We see turkey all the time. There's a good migration path from the back of our place up across baseline. And on the back side of the river, We've got about 15 or 20 acres on the back side, and then there's another couple hundred acres that the neighbor has a pure timber. So there's just a lot of wildlife in there. Whatever kind of wildlife you want, beavers, raccoons, or uh, of course we have possums like everybody else does too. We've just got all kinds of wildlife. It's, it's, it's a hunter's uh, dream area. Out. We got the beautiful trees, and we got our horses right there, and some cattle grazing over here. And I said, "We live in paradise." 